This dried up caldera, if you put your foot on here, you can really, really feel the heat coming, even though it's dry. Woo, it's hot right here in this one. Right there, that's the village I grew up in. So here we are, hanging with the P in the Azores. All right, so today I'm gonna take you on a little trip to the Azores, mainly to the island of San Miguel, where I grew up, and we're gonna go over some things to do. But we're mainly gonna concentrate in the Fulnish region and the Setsi Dodge region. One is on the east coast, the other one is on the west coast. We will go over some cool things to do, and of course we're gonna talk about the food, what you should try when you're here because there's a lot of seafood, there's a lot of good food. And we are in San Miguel, we just got here. So when car. you first get to the Azores, you most likely are going to be in Punta Delgada, which is the capital of San Miguel. There's a total of nine islands in the Azores, and San Miguel is the main island with Punta Delgada being the capital. We're not going to spend too much time talking about Punta Delgada, but when you come to San Miguel, this is the place where you're initially going to be coming into. This is where the cruise ship stop, where the airport is. So we'll go over a few things to do in Punta Delgada. Here we are at the Dockers. This is the... Uh the marina part and then the other side there is all kinds of restaurants and uh, the sun's going down the Porta de Cidad is over there where that tower is on the other side and then there's a the matriz which is that church right there and some hotels and stuff like that and the party is over that way you go underneath that path and that's where the restaurants are and they're setting up for a concert it's about seven o'clock right now this is what it looks like. Isn't that nice right there? Punta Delgada is a beautiful city. It's clean, it's safe. It's a nice place to just come in. People watch, have some dessert, have some coffee. If you only have a few hours before your cruise ship sails, it's a good place to come out and hang out, have a mojito. The place I like to hang out is Cafe Central. It's a nice little restaurant with outdoor seating where you could just sit there, order dessert, and enjoy the city. This is the uh, traditional rock here, it's volcanic rock. You can see all these pores, it's used for everything, for walls, for houses. Furnish is best known for the calderas and the thermal bats, and I highly recommend that you come here, you take at least a day, there's many things to do. Enjoying some time in the thermal bats in Furnish is a must thing to do. <laughs> and the place I like to come is called Upusa de Duna Beja. Another thing that Fulnish is known for is their hiking trails. They have beautiful hiking trails. I mean, you can really spend a lot of time just hiking here. They have a nice botanical garden, probably the best botanical garden in San Miguel. And really, when you come here, you really feel like you're in a different planet altogether. There's smoke coming out of the ground. You can smell the sulfur. The earth is hot from the volcano activity underneath. And what you got to remember when you're here is you really are walking on top of a volcano. As you can see from these pictures, not too long ago, somebody discovered smoke. They went to look at it. There was a hole in the ground, and it's the beginning of a caldera. So there's a lot of volcanic activity going on here and it's something to keep in mind that no other place can you really walk on top of a caldera. Right here you can see a dried up caldera that they let you walk on and you can see how all the minerals from the sulfur and all that stuff has changed the color of the earth but this is a dried up caldera. And this dried up caldera if you put your foot on here you can really really feel the heat coming even though it's dry. Woo it's hot right here in this one. Oh, yeah. That's really, really Finish hot. is known for the cozido, which is cooked by the thermal heat in a pit that is dug on the ground. It consists of meat and vegetables cooked by the earth itself. So here we are in Furnish, and it's about 8 o'clock at night. Uh, there's not a lot of tourists right here, so I'm giving you a behind the scenes of the calderas. Nice, beautiful day. Nobody here. I guess it's a tip, if you come here around this time, you get the whole Furnish and Caldera to yourself. Another great place to come visit is Setsi Dodge, where you can get a view of the green and blue lake at the Vista do Rei Miradorum.
You can see the difference. Green and then blue. See it? And then right over here we got an abandoned hotel. This used to be like a luxury hotel. It survived about 10 years. And then it just fell to disrepair and people stopped coming here. So this used to be a beautiful hotel. There's actually a story about this on YouTube if you search it for the Palace Hotel and Setsi Dodge. It's kind of sad what happened. Watch the video on it. It's a great story. the Green Lake right here. Setsi Dodge is a village that is deep in the valley and really the main attraction here is the lakes. And you can come here to the lakes and kayak. It's a really nice place to just come and relax and enjoy nature and just get away from society. One of the great things about San Miguel is just driving around, there's what they call miradores or lookout points, which don't cost you anything. You could just stop the car and look out into the vast blue ocean. Yeah, there's no rails, you can just fall off this thing. These lookout points can be found everywhere on the island. Some of the most famous lookout points are in the Nordesh region of the island. These lookout points are a great place to picnic and grill and just enjoy the beautiful views of nature. San Miguel also has a vast amount of natural spring water. Water fountains and springs can be found everywhere throughout the island. The water will taste different depending on where the springs are and the mineral content in the water. You really do taste a difference from fountain to fountain, from spring to spring throughout the island. Gotta watch my step before I trip. Natural water right there from the mountains. Let me drink this. This is, this is here for, it's been here for a long time. It's like, it has a lot of minerals and because it has a high content of minerals, it goes through all the rocks and it gets filtered. It's very pure water. The local government does catalog all these water fountains as well as maintain them. Typically, it's very safe to drink this water. There are many waterfalls like this throughout the island. One of the regions of the island with beautiful waterfalls is Nordesh. You should really visit Nordesh for the beautiful waterfalls, breathtaking views of the ocean, and many landscape parks. Of course, there wouldn't be an island without beaches, and there's plenty of beaches in San Miguel. This beach right here, Santa Barbara Beach, is a surfer's beach, which I like to come, enjoy a special cocktail, a sandwich, and just relax by the beach. You should always have swimwear with you, because driving around this island, you never know when you're gonna bump into a beautiful beach. There's just so many beaches and natural pools to choose from, that you never know when you're gonna bump into a nice beach. The sand here is dark due to the volcanic nature of the island. This is one of the natural pools, the bay, and then the other pools over there with that glasses. tea plantation uh, this is all tea right here there's only one place in Europe that they grow tea and it's in the uh, Azorian island of San Miguel right there's a tea factory Chagoriana and there's all the tea over here in the Azores once in a while it's cloudy then the Sun comes out and it gets really muggy and hot and the wind coming from the bay from the ocean I guess it's good for the tea um, but it's the only place that you can grow tea over here it's like a subtropical weather you grow palm trees, but you grow other things that you can't grow in the tropics. And basically the women used to do this traditionally. They'll come here and just pick all the tea like this. Right, that's a tea leaf. But now they do it, uh, they do it with machines. And then the other thing is the terrain here is this color because it's volcanic. volcanic. So the terrain is, has a weird color to it, it's reddish. This is to sort the tea right here. 
moment, he would come down there, they would sort it. Spit on to separate the tea right there. Various machines for tea making. This is uh, to dry the tea, I believe. He said skull shark, he did. This is where you dry the tea right here. So. This machine's probably been here for a while. Um, I don't know if they're the original machines, but it could be. Yep, yeah, that's what it says. A dryer. Marshall's quality drive. I bet you this is probably an English machine. Marshall's of Ginsborough. Yeah, guaranteed that's a English machine. And then here's the bags full of tea. The aroma in here is of tea. And these are the bags that would have the tea. And yep, there's the tea. There's the dry tea right here. This actually might be green tea. Packaging the tea in there. Was the little bags of tea right there. So here I am trying it. It's pretty good. So there used to be about 10 to a dozen tea plantations. Um, right now there's only two. There's uh, Shah Port Frumuz and then uh, Shah Guryana. And you can visit Shah Guryana like I did here. You can have some tea and, and learn how the tea leaf is processed and transformed into tea. This is all possible because of an agreement between the uh, Azorean Islands and the Chinese which they came here and uh, showed them how to produce tea. When you're in San Miguel, if you happen to stay at one of the villages, a cool thing to do is participate in the local fashta or the feast and just enjoy the traditions. During the summer months, there's always a feast going on at one of the villages. I highly recommend that you check it out and enjoy the feast. There it goes! At these feasts, one of the things that they sell is called a bifana, which basically is a pork cutlet in a sandwich with potatoes and mayo and vegetables. It's really good. You have to try it. If you go to one of these feasts, you got to try this sandwich called a bifana. I highly recommend it. These feasts usually go on till 1, 2 o'clock in the morning and everybody comes out from the village, has a good time, drinks, eats and just socializes. You're allowed to drink on the streets and have a good time and it's just a really nice way to experience a local tradition. We're partying here, it's like 12 o'clock, like 1 o'clock, I don't even know what time it is. We're gonna drink a lot and then this man shows up. Uh. These feasts usually go on for 8 days. Towards the end of the last day, they end with fireworks. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. We're gonna to touch a little bit on the food here. When you're here, one thing I recommend that you try is the fish soup, like I'm trying here. The fish chowder. Anything fish in this island is just gonna be great. The chorizo, the local seafood, everything is just really fresh, made there. And you can't go wrong with the steak. Anywhere you go pretty much in this island, the food is going to be terrific. Try the food, try the fruit, try the cheeses, and don't forget your coffee. This is the PA. Thank you for watching my video. If you like this video, you want to see a video just dedicated to the food in San Miguel, let me know. Drop a message. Thank you for watching. This is the PA. Until the next video. Peace. Bumper cars here, there is no seat belt, there is no H check, there is no guardrail, there is no safety. Safety last in Portugal. Come kids of all ages. Come crash.